Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. As you can see, we have our chef here in the kitchen getting everything ready for tonight's um, Mediterranean cruising and cooking live. You are seeing the behind the scenes action of it all. And I see a lot of you, um, we have Tammy Lewis here from Regent and Chef John Stefano is joining us from Philadelphia. Tammy, tell us where you're coming in from. I'm coming in from Los Angeles. Yay. We've got LA, we've got yeah. New York, we've got Philadelphia, and I see a lot of you joining us here today um, from Arizona, two from Arizona, Glendale, Virginia. We've got, um, oh, we've got a Peru. Kindle, Kindle Journeys is joining us in from Peru. Thanks for joining us. Uh, all of you guys, please let us know where you're coming in from today. We love having you here and are so glad you're joining us. We're going to be having some really watching some really good food being made later in the evening. And we're gonna be starting out um, today, actually starting with a cocktail because that's the best way to start. Lynn, thanks for joining us from Chicago. Uh, but we're really excited to be here with you guys tonight. I love these virtual events. They're such a great way to engage and learn new things. And who doesn't wanna talk about travel and learn about an amazing cruise that I'm gonna be going on November of 2022 and that you guys out there are welcome to join in on. So that's one thing that we're going to go over tonight. Um, but Chef, I just wanted you to give a shout out and say hello to everyone. Hello and thrilled to see everyone this evening. It should be a lot of fun. Jam-packed, lots of fun, lots of food, lots of cocktails. Yeah, tell us the menu here for tonight. So we're going to start off with this beautiful Croatian uh, mojito which is flavored with, uh, with lavender and lemon, a uh, really nice spin on the mojito. Uh, then we're gonna dive into some truly authentic Greek Mediterranean hummus. And then we're gonna teach the technique of shallow poaching, uh, Mediterranean bronzino, beautiful fish. We're gonna shallow poach it for you, teach you some of the techniques behind it. And then between the cooking, if we can, we're gonna try to squeeze in one of my favorites, which is a, uh, an incredible spread uh, tzatziki, uh, which is a Greek cucumber spread with dill. So uh, it's jam-packed, it's lots of fun, uh, and we hope everyone sticks around and enjoys the evening. And just so you guys know, I, I couldn't not bring some food to this live because I knew Chef was going to make me so hungry. So I actually have my own hummus here um, and tabbouleh that I will be enjoying later in the live. Um, and, but I wish I was enjoying chef's version because it's probably better than the one that I picked up down the street at my New York takeout place, <laughs> but I'm not sure about that, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it's delicious nonetheless. And if you guys want to follow along, we, we do have the re recipes also on our website, darling-newman.com, where you can also check out the itinerary for the cruise that we're going to be talking about today. And we have some exciting things coming up in the night. And I just wanted to lay that out briefly for you before we start to learn the first cocktail recipe. So tonight, the way we're gonna, we're gonna do this live is we're gonna start out with the cocktail recipe so you can get your drinks on and join us for a toast. Um, then Tammy and I are gonna go over information about the Mediterranean cruise, November, 2022. It's the second through the ninth that I'm gonna be on. And I'm really excited about my first experience going abroad was a European cruise and a Mediterranean cruise. And it's such an amazing area to cruise in. So we're really excited to get you guys excited for that and to learn more about the places um, that, the, that the cruise goes. And then we're also gonna be having some trivia as if that wasn't enough and giving away cookbooks as well as luggage tags and bags from Travels with Darley. So pay attention because we will be having trivia questions that you can answer to win tonight. And we're kind of excited because we are splitting this live for the first time ever between Zoom and Facebook. So you can join us in either place and we're gonna to try to engage with you on both platforms. Um, but most importantly, please engage with us. Tell us where you're from right now. If you have questions, type them into the chat box or the Q&A area. There are two areas where you can correspond with us. And we're gonna to try to get to your questions as we go 
throughout the live. And I see we've got people coming in from San Diego. We've got Marina Del Rey, LA, Bayview, Idaho. Daniel's coming from Huntington, New York. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We're really excited to be here with you. And again, these virtual events are such a great way to um, get to know you better and also talk about travel, which we all love. So I'm going to let Chef take it away and share with us. Now, one thing I have to say about uh, our amazing chef tonight, you can meet him on, on these cruises because he actually sails aboard the ships. And I loved to hear about your background because you grew up cooking with your family, with your mother and grandmother, which is such a great way to learn anything. And also we have an like the honor of having this chef because he graduated from the Culinary Institute of America, which is you know, not an easy school to get into and definitely not one to graduate for and truly combines global flavors to the meals that he makes. So chef, I'm going to let you take it away with this Croatian cocktail so we could all get right. to have all a right. Thanks again, Darlie. Thanks again, uh, Tammy. And to everyone out there, I hope you have a really enjoyable evening and we can't express how excited we are to see you on the seven seas explore in splendor in the next, uh, in the next 12, uh, 12 to 24 months. We'll be thrilled to see each and every one of you. So it should be an exciting time. Yes, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I come from an Irish and Italian background. The Irish side is the, uh, is the large side. There's only a hundred cousins. Uh, so if you ever wanted the attention of your grandmother or your mother, the only place you wanted, you wanted to be found was in a bar stool inside the kitchen. And that's where my love and my passion for food came from. I spent those uh, formative years watching my mother, watching my uh, grandmother really cook and incorporate life and family and experiences uh, into their dishes, into their food, everything from Irish macaroni and cheese to German, uh, German potato salad. It really was a delight. And that's where my, uh, that's where my passion came from. So I don't want to take too much of your time. We'll have plenty of time for questions. I think it's time to get started for a cocktail. What do you think, Darby? Let's do it. Let's do it. So everybody, everybody's probably tried a mojito before. Um, you know, we really wanted to take a twist on the Mediterranean and incorporate some flavors from one of my favorite countries, which is Croatia. And we're actually, I believe, during uh, Darley's cruise, we'll be uh, in the port of Split. So uh, look for this cocktail or look for a version of this cocktail. And the flavors that make this so exciting are two for me that are really important. And when you head to the local markets, if you join me or if you join Darley at the local market, that you'll see uh, two flavor profiles that are really unique uh, to Croatia. Number one is lavender. You'll see it growing all over the fields there and inside the markets dried out and lemons. There are lemons, uh, those Sorrento lemons from Italy are incredible. These lemons are absolutely scrumptious, delicious, full of flavor. So if you're ready, we're gonna get started. I'll start off with a lemon. And I'm going to cut this lemon because I'm going to use about uh, three quarters. And as Darlie said, uh, please feel free to follow uh, us along. But we have all the recipes uh, back in the line for you. I'm going to take this. This is a great tool. This is called a, uh, a citrus reamer. And watch as I stir and pour. So I want about just under a quarter cup. So it's anywhere between a half and three quarters of a lemon. So I'll put that to the side. So that's the first thing that goes in. I'm gonna drizzle this. I'm gonna to try to keep as many seeds out of there as possible. So what's unique about the flavors of Croatia is they're so fresh, they're so uh, seasonal, and they really do influence all the flavors in their classic Mediterranean flavor. So there's my lemon juice. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna sweeten this up. So I'm gonna use brown sugar here. I'm going to use about uh, just under two, two tablespoons. And then here is our favorite uh, flavor here, which is the lavender. Mm. Now, if anybody's familiar with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, the, the royal family in England, uh, one of their famous cakes is lavender and lemon. And I think the princess or the future king's uh, wedding cake was made after these flavor profiles. So next, I'm going to take fresh mint. And I urge you to either grow your own herbs or spices, but if not, try to buy them locally sourced at a store. I'm going to take these and put these in. Wipe this down. All that over. mint over here, I feel like. And yeah, I can smell it right here. So let, let me know if it comes through. I'm going to take a muddler and I'm going to lightly start to muddle. 
what I'm trying to do is really kind of create the essential oils and have them kind of explode all over this cocktail. And you'll see as we mix in the brown sugar and the mint, we are good to go. All right, now we get into some alcohol. First thing I want to add is I'm going to add rum. I'm going to add about an ounce and a half of rum. You may see me go a little bit over, but it is a wonderful night, so we'll go for that. I hope everybody's got beautiful weather where they are. And then I want to stir this one more time with my mother. I'll put this to the side. Now I'm going to take out my, uh, my glass, my goblet, my wine glass. I'm gonna put two or three uh, mint leaves in there. I've got these beautiful ice cubes. One, two, look at those, Darlie, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I like those. I need to get some, some of those special uh, things so I can freeze. All right, so we're gonna stir this around. And look at this beautiful color as this comes out of the glass. You'll notice some of the lavender leaves as they've broken up. Kind of sprinkle throughout the glass. And I'll fill all of that in there. And the most important thing is sparkling wine. So you can use club soda or sparkling uh, wine. I prefer to add more alcohol to our, uh, to our cocktail. So I'm gonna use some classic Prosecco. And this will open this up. I'm gonna pour this about halfway just to cover the ice cube. Then I wanna garnish this. And garnish this with a beautiful slice of lemon. I want to garnish this with some lavender, a lavender stem. By the way, when you use lavender, always make sure that uh, that it's food grade lavender. Uh, sometimes uh, dried or perfumed lavender has got some uh, uh, got some sprays on it. But there you go. This is our Croatian play on a classic mojito with lemon and lavender and. Uh, and mint. So uh, a toast to this evening, a toast to a fabulous time. Darling, thank you. Sammy, let's, uh, let's have a great evening. And to all of our guests out there, enjoy. I hope to see you on the seven seas. Cheers to everybody. And that looks delicious, Chef. I'm now I'm jealous of your, I was jealous of the menu you were making. Oh, that's good. The that that is good. Yeah, Chef's going to be very happy over there <laughs> by the time he starts. Well, I'll see you back. I'll see you in a little while. We're going to jump into a couple great dishes after. So cheers to everybody and thanks so much for joining Maura. I see you've hopped on and Ina's hopped on. Tanya, cheers. I hope you all have a cocktail in hand. Um, I, uh, I need to join Chef in Philadelphia to get my Croatian mojito, James, but appreciate you guys coming on today. And please remember if you have questions for us as we go through this live tonight, please type the questions into the chat box or into the Q&A box. We'll be looking at both. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can use the link to, we have to Zoom and hop over to Zoom if you want. If you prefer Facebook, you can hang out on Facebook. We're addressing both tonight. We're, we're cross-platforming this live. It's um, the new way to reach new great folks like you guys on the platform where, where you wanna be. And Liz says she is enjoying some wine. So cheers to you, Liz. I hope maybe you're having a crisp rosé or something. And um, Anna Marie Smith is telling us that the last trip she had included a Dalmatian Islands cruise, which embarked in Split. So she has been to Croatia. So we've got an educated audience of travelers out here today. So thank you guys for joining us. And if you're just coming on now, let us know where you are, where you're joining us from, and please start to get your questions ready for us. Um, and we have a question actually for Chef, if you can hear us, um, if you're using dried lavender. Yeah, so it's a, I am using dried, dried lavender. It won't, uh, it won't last long. So what I typically do, if anyone's ever seen roses turned upside down, tied and hung in their, uh, in their shower or their bathroom, perfect way to do it. And you can buy this lavender all over the Croatian coasts. Just make sure uh, if you buy it at a store that it is for culinary use and not just a, a, in a little sachet uh, in, your, uh, in your clothes basket or in your treasure drawer. Good note. I like that. That's a good, that's a good idea. And Mark Stein just came in from Las Vegas. Thanks for telling us where you're from, Mark. And um, if you guys have been on a cruise before, or you've been on a Mediterranean cruise, we'd love to know about that as well. So please type it into the chat or, or um, again, you can use the chat or the Q&A box. We're checking both. 
Um, I, I did my first cruise to Europe when I was in high school with a friend's family, and I felt so fortunate that they let me come with them. It was my first time going out of the country to um, Europe, and it was my first time exploring the Mediterranean. And I actually got to go to some of the destinations um, where you're, you're going to get to go if you join me on this cruise November of 2022. And there are some really amazing places that we're going to discover tonight. And Tammy, I want to um, reintroduce you for people that just are coming on the live now. I'm excited to have Tammy on coming to us from LA and she is part of Regent Seven Seas Cruises. So she's very knowledgeable about cruising in general and this cruise in particular. And I'm excited because um, Tammy has a really great story about how she got into the cruise business. And so I will, before we launch into some of the information we're gonna share with you tonight, I would love Tammy, if you would share with everyone the story that you were telling me. Sure, Darley. Well, first off, welcome everybody. I'm very excited to be here with Darley and we're so excited to have you on Regent Southern Seas Cruises. So it's kind of an interesting story how I did get into the cruise industry. It was a long time ago, but some of my friends had a 40 foot yacht and they invited my husband and I uh, to go with them. And we actually sailed from Central America, uh, crossed the equator and we ended up in Tahiti and we were gone about eight months. And when I got back, one of my good friends told me about this new position at a cruise line and she said, you should interview. And I interviewed and the person that was interviewing me said, wow, you crossed the equator 23 days without a landfall. You can work for me any day of the week. And that's how I got into the cruise line business and have been here for many, many moons. It's a that lot of fun. Quite the, you're quite the adventurer which I can relate to. So I really yes. appreciate that. And Shannon's piping in and saying, wow, Tammy, that's a cruise. Um, well, and yes. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of wows happening. Amazing story. And we also um, had a question already from Daniel asking about the size of this cruise ship and the number of passengers. Because I think we're going to go over that. But Daniel, it is a great question to start with. It's a great question because most cruise lines have thousands and thousands of guests, but with Regent Seven Seas, very intimate. You know, we only have 750 guests on the ship. So, you know, you meet new people, they get to know your name and preferences. And I think that's what really keeps resonating with our guests and why they come back time and time again, because it's just, it's just so easy. You don't wait in line and people really love that. And Shannon was saying that is a, that's a good size, especially for the Mediterranean, because it is an intimate experience, I think, when you go to some of these different ports. Um, and just so you guys know, this cruise in particular that we're talking about, which is sailing November 2nd through 9th of 2022. So we've got a little time on this, but um, people are actually booking this now, which is great because people are really wanting to travel. So they're planning ahead at this point. But this goes from Venice to Rome, and it has stops in Croatia, Montenegro, Greece, Sicily, and Naples. But Mincy maybe can start sharing some um, of the, the, the imagery that we wanted to share with you so you guys could see kind of some of the, um, some of the aspects of this cruise that are going to be fun and unique. And um, again, I'm excited if you want to go to the next slide. Mincy, um, for this cruise in particular, here you can see a map of the itinerary um, and, and the different stops along the way. And there's also the option. So I work with, um, I think some of you guys may know, because I see some familiar names of people who are joining. I started something called Darley Vacations in February, which was a great thing to start uh, right as the pandemic was ending. We kind of timed it that way because we knew people were gearing up to travel. So I work with Kathy Moa of Gourmet Voyages. I partnered with a women-owned um, travel agency and, and, and travel agent, and she actually books trips based on things I've loved and experienced in my life. So that's how we kind of came to to start looking at this Regent cruise and, and working on organizing a trip so that you guys could join me on it. So it's a seven night cruise and I'm excited because I'm going to be having cocktails with people on board, which is always fun, dinners. Um, we're going to do a cooking class. I will be doing some shore excursions. So lots of fun ways. I love traveling in Europe and I love travel in general. And again, I've been to many of these ports. So not only will I be knowledgeable about some of it, but also be excited to discover the places with you. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Mincy, we'll see some, um, 
see some of what we're, oh, this is funny. I just wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> These are photos from my actual high school trip <laughs> and later years to go to Europe and take this cruise. So um, I did not push over the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I did not accomplish that feat, but did have an amazing adventure exploring Venice. And you can see the colors on these photos because they've been in an actual photo album. Do they even have those anymore? Yes, we have one and I have many at my house. If you want to um, flip to the next slide, Mincy. So just these are just some of the things that I'm going to do on board with a small group. Um, we're only taking a limited number of bookings for this, um, but we will be doing a cocktail reception, a cooking class. I'll give a travel lecture and behind the scenes, and it'll just be a fun way to hang out and explore Europe together, which I'm really excited about. Tammy, turning it to you. Okay, well... I want to go, darling, and maybe we can do some horseback <laughs> riding together someplace along the way, right? So we have a really great offer on this, for this cruise starting on November 2nd on our newest ship, the Seven Sea Splendor. And I'm so lucky because before we had to put a pause in cruising, I actually got to sail on this marvelous new ship. But we have a great incentive when you go with Darling on this wonderful exploration, I will call it. And we're giving a thousand dollar per suite shipboard credit if you book between now and the end of this month, April 30th. So Kathy, who is the travel advisor extraordinaire, can give you all the details and you can contact her directly uh, to get all the details on the pricing and the promotion. Yeah, and we've got the contact information there. And I'm kind of excited. We mentioned the size of the ship a little bit, and we talked a little bit about um, the experience overall. But if you look at some of the slides we're about to share, and Tammy's going to give us more information, but I'm I'm just excited about the level of luxury you get to experience on a cruise like this. It makes it really interesting and unique. And if you guys can see me, my cat is like popping in to, <laughs> Love it. to bomb us here. But Love Tammy, it. you want to go through some of it? Yeah, please. Well, you know, when I did that 40 foot yacht cruise, it was bare bones. Region Seven Seas is a far cry from that experience. I am here to tell you that it is a six star luxury experience. But what really resonates with our guests is really authentic experiences getting into the heart of the destination with knowledgeable guides and in complete comfort. And we include free and limited shore excursions. It's very unusual. So if you love history, culture, wine, if you're a foodie, there's really something for everyone. And what I really love about this company is really the team and it's our crew and they will go above and beyond to make sure that you have everything that you need, but they really love what they do. And it really shows by their smile in our suites, um, everyone has an ocean front view on the Seven Sea Splendor, and our suites range from 300 to more than 4,000 square feet. So that's cute. A that's much so bigger than my New York apartment, Tammy. That's like you may need to get me living on the cruise ship. I think at some point, should we? There's actually that? people that do. You would be <laughs> surprised. Uh, but all the creature comforts of home are there, really, for the taking, and uh, it's just so enjoyable. What I really love, and Mincy, if you want to go to the next slide. And probably one of my most favorite things is just sitting out on my balcony and just really watching the world go by. You know, we have 24 hour room service. So it's just wonderful to sit out, you know, breakfast time, have your cappuccino, fresh fruit, and just really relax before you go out either to work out or go on a shore excursion and really get immersed in the destinations that we have in this really amazing itinerary. And Tammy, we actually have two questions that have just come in. One is from Lynn, who was asking about the $1,000 credit. She said she's never cruised before, but she thought it would be all-inclusive. What would she use the credit for on board? That is a great question. So we have a very luxurious spa that was curated just for Regent Seven Seas. It's called Serene Spa and Wellness Center. And you can have beautiful treatments and just really take care of yourself. Most of our shore excursions are actually included, but there are a few that aren't. They're called choice shore excursions, and you can use it to pay for any of those things. And then also we have a phenomenal gift shop you can enjoy there. You know, pretty much most of the premium alcohol is included, but if you want a bottle of Dom Perignon or something like that, you can definitely use that out of $1,000 to really splurge. So you will spend and you will really enjoy it with $1,000. Yeah, that's a, no, I mean, I'm, I'm like, that's a great incentive, please. 
Um, and and also and that's if you book by April 30th, folks. Just so you know. And and then um, we had another question from Mark, and this is this is one that um, I understand, Mark, because I get we get this question from a lot of people about um, single supplements. Is there a single supplement for single travelers or Tammy, how does that work? Yeah, there is a single supplement for solo travelers and we have a lot for solo travelers on board. It depends on the category. So Kathy can give Mark all of the details. It's, it ranges from 150 to 175. So if it was double occupancy, that would be 200%. So think about a single rate plus 50% more on selected categories. Great, and I see the slide coming up for one of the things that I like about travel in general, and especially this cruise is they have the go local tours, because as you guys know, if you've seen my show Travels with Darley, which is on PBS, Amazon Prime, Ovation TV, you know that I'm always on camera with a local. They're guiding us around, and it's such a great way to really understand the culture. I recommend wherever you travel, if you can take a local tour at some point, whether it's a food tour or you're doing a walking tour of a neighborhood, an art tour, great way to meet the locals. And Tammy, tell us about the Go Local tours that are gonna be on offer. I mean, really the shore excursion is really cornerstone of what we do at Regent Seven Seas. And some of the ones that we're gonna be offering on the cruise that you're going on, which is one that I would love to do. It's hanging out with a local family at their estate and learning how to make their local wine and doing a wine tasting and have a culinary experience with them. Or we have a family farm that we'll take you to and you can learn all about their olive groves and really experience virgin olive oil tasting. So we have so many different things to offer, but those are two that I really wanted to highlight. Uh, yeah, I like those. And of course, like this one, we all love, especially chef because it involves great gourmet food, which if you guys have traveled in Europe, and by the way, if you've traveled in Europe, tell us some of the places that you've been, type it into the chat, I'd love to know. Um, it's one of my favorite places to travel. And, and it, I'm excited about this cruise because it goes a place I have not been, Montenegro, and also Malta. So there's some really good chances to explore new places, but they also have these gourmet explorer tours, which are really sounding tasty. So these are really cool. These are chef led tours. And uh, they will take you off the ship. You will shop for the freshest ingredients and then you'll take them back on board and learn how to prepare them. You go to Michelin star restaurants. I mean, we have so many different things to offer, but I don't want to steal chef's thunder. So I'm sure he will be talking more about uh, those really cool tours when he talks about uh, his Mediterranean cuisine. Great. Nancy, if you want to go to the next. Oh, this is, this is, a, I like this shot, you guys, because of just, if you look quickly at it, we talked about the size of the ship, but I mean, that that's a really stark photo to understand the more intimate setting on this particular cruise. This one is a really important slide. Do you want to go back one, one slide, Mincy? Oh yeah, this one I love just because I think it just really gives you a perspective. If you've cruised before on large ships who do a fantastic job, our experience is just a lot more intimate. And I think that's what our guests really love about Regent Seven Seas. But I think a picture says it all and you can really just see how intimate our, our ships are and especially compared to the big ships. And this is a big selling point too, because um, international business class flights are actually included in the price that we're listing. And that's a huge um, bonus when you start to do the math on it. I call it arriving in style, right? <laughs> totally. Yeah. And these are some of the different things that are included and, and free um, as part of this um, package. If you guys want to take a closer look, you can also look at the actual itinerary on our website and we're going to be sharing um, more links to those, but I, I wanted to point out, um, and I, I don't know if we had it on the slide or not, um, Tammy, but just to mention the butler service. Right, the butler <laughs> service. You don't think you need a butler until you don't have a butler. And there was a grand suite that we had a cancellation. And so this is years back, they, they let me experience it. And um, my button fell off my shirt. He sewed it back on. I was late to a cocktail party, but they have a special pillow menu. They work as really more of a private concierge. They bring you hors d'oeuvres and a 24 hour room service. And it is quite wonderful. And those butlers are available in our penthouse suites and above. And um, Anna Marie is telling us that she has been to every port on this cruise except Messina, Sicily. 
Um, and Sicily is amazing. I was able to travel there when I studied abroad in Italy, in Florence, Italy. Um, but, in, in, and actually, um, Anna Marie has done a lot of travel in Europe. So exciting to see all Switzerland, Croatia three times, Italy three times. So yeah, let us know you guys, if you've been on a cruise or where you've been in Europe, because we'd love to know. And the, this next photo, you can see sort of the interior of the ship. This is the atrium area. And again, the ship is, we call it luxury perfected. I mean, every luxury is there really just to totally enjoy. Um, we had several different design teams working on the ship. Um, she has an acre of Italian marble. She has $5 million of curated artwork. I mean, she is just spectacular. Everywhere you turn, you know, there's something really interesting. And we do art tours. We do a lot of really fun things, but the big part of the experience is really enrichment. And I always like to say, you know, our guests come back better than when they left uh, with our experience. Oh, and dining, of course, you guys were, I know if you're attending tonight's live, you're concerned about the food because that is one of the biggest things when you're traveling is what are you gonna be able to eat or what's gonna be served? And there's a lot of different choices um, on this cruise in particular, and you can try a lot of the local foods when you go on shore, but also on the actual ship itself. And there's a lot of different choices, a lot of different dining areas. And it is really all about choices. I love to say it's an Epicurean adventure at Regent Seven Seas because we have so many specialty dining uh, venues and they're all included. So you won't pay anything extra for those. But we have an exquisite French restaurant called Chartreuse. And at every single uh, venue, you know, we just do a beautiful job of food and wine pairings. Uh, we also have Pacific Rim. If you love sushi, sake, Vietnamese, Chinese, I love the black cod. Um, it's, it's remarkable. We serve lobster every night in the Compass Rose, which is open dining seating. It's country club casual. You don't have to dress up. Um, there's tables for two, four, six, eight, and 10. Uh, there's an Italian restaurant, just the freshest pasta, the best cioppino. And then there's the steakhouse, which is called Prime Seven. And every, it's aged beef. Um, there is also choices like Alaskan king crab, two pounds. It's my favorite thing on the menu, but I always end my night and the picture has got the 14 in it. And it's the 14 inches of chocolate layer cake dipped in pistachio sauce. It's absolutely to die for. Highly start, recommend it. I'm going to have to start eating something over here, guys. And Go for it. If you're joining us, um, chef is going to be teaching us how to make hummus and some other things later. And he's getting it ready as we go through some more of this information. And Lynn was asking Tammy um, if there were tours of the art on board. Yes, there are tours of the art on board. Yeah, because this that's another unique aspect of, of being on the ship. But this is the culinary arts kitchen. So this is what chef is well acquainted with this space. And what I thought it was cool about this is that you actually could be cooking and looking out and seeing the world kind of roll by as you do so, which is really awesome. And also it's just state of the art. And as far as I'm always taking classes and learning from chefs as I travel, if you've seen our show, I've cooked with Michelin star chefs all over the world. Hasn't made me the best cook yet, but it has made me enjoy food even more. And that's a big aspect of what you can experience um, by taking a cooking class on, on this cruise. And I think one of the things that we really pride ourselves is really having that unrivaled space at sea. And if you go back to that photo, we have 18 individual cooking stations and we have lots of different classes. I know that you're going to have fun cooking on board, Darlie. You're going to love it. I'm excited. Mincy's rolling through some of the slides. This is taking us to the lounge where we would all be hanging out for drinks. <laughs> and the best thing about it really is you can meet new people and you never have to pick up the tab because you're, there's nothing to swipe uh, or sign for on board. And as you guys can see, I mean, the accommodations are beautiful. And I think the amount of space that you can get, because a lot of people fear that they go on a cruise and that it would be claustrophobic in some way. And that's not the case um, on this particular cruise. And especially not in this particular suite. This is the Regent suite. This is the best address at sea. This suite is 4,443 square feet of pure luxury. I mean, here's a fun fact. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the bed. It's a Hastings bed made in Sweden. And just for fun, what do you think it costs? Oh, I mean, like, is it like 15, 20,000? It's $150,000. What? Yes. So it has two bedrooms. Mincy, if you want to go to the next slide, 
Uh, it has an expansive living area. It sleeps up to six. It has a beautiful dining area and just an amazing balcony. Um, there's a jacuzzi. And if you go to the next slide, um, one of the premier things about the Regent Suite is it has an in-suite spa and you can have unlimited treatments throughout your journey. So, so yes. it's quite wonderful in a private car and driver as well. Yes, but you would also be very happy in our penthouse suites too. Oh my gosh. Because uh, again, the private butler. They're all amazing. And if you guys want to splurge, I mean, this would be an amazing splurge vacation uh, and just beautiful, beautiful surroundings. And I would take either one, Tammy. <laughs> Me too. And when I was on board, this was my suite. And honestly, I was so happy. I mean, the beds are amazing. Um, we have these sweet slumber beds. Our thread count is more than a thousand. I mean, those little details are wonderful. You know, for my 25th anniversary, my husband said, okay, you can have the gold bracelet or the Regent Seven C sheets. And what do you think I chose? <laughs> I chose the sheets and I'm dreamy sleeping ever since. But again, just sitting area, stock mini bar, 24 hour room service, walk-in closets, just it's amazing. Yeah. And I've, I've traveled a lot and I've done everything from like camping to live, like luxurious accommodations. And it's not until you've traveled a lot and experienced some really bad sheets that you understand. Like that sounds really you appreciate. Weird, but, right. Yeah. So little I, things. I've slept with like a sweatshirt under my head before. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I'm getting like scratched by them. <laughs> it's interesting. We'll go to the next slide in video. And as you guys can see, this is um, some footage from some of the different places at Regent Sales um, all around the world and really like fascinating locations. And again, that with that local flavor, I'm, I'm sure some of you recognize some of the destinations we're seeing here, including Jordan and we had a, a Australia come up. Um, and these are some of the Mediterranean footage of some of the destinations for this particular cruise, which is um, going to Venice and it's going to Sicily and Malta, all these really dreamy places. And I love that it starts and ends in Italy because Italy is one of my favorite destinations. And again, with lots of different um, luxury on board, it makes me want to take a sip of my drink. <laughs> So, and James is just commenting, the first ship in this Regent series, Seven Seas Voyager, was known as the most luxurious ship ever built. And Splendor came out a year ago, but literally hasn't cruised since. Okay, so we're going to be getting on a new ship and getting to cruise it in a new new way. But that's a good, that's a good factoid there, James. Thank and, you, and, James. And did yeah. you see how happy that couple was? I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be happy to go anywhere once this pandemic's over. <laughs> Absolutely. They call that fern, fern way. It's, you know, there's homesick and then there's wanting to go away and that's fern way. It's just the homesick of wanting to be away. So I think we're all dreaming of that. Yes. And Mincy, we can go to the next slide whenever, um, whenever you can on your end. But in the meantime, if you guys are joining us, please let us know um, if you have questions and we are going to be um, coming up here in a minute and Mincy had a laptop freeze on the other end. <laughs> we are, she's troubleshooting it. Um, we are gonna be um, sharing with you um, a cooking lesson. Our, our chef here is going to be teaching us how to make some Mediterranean dishes, which is awesome. But um, I just wanted to also check out, we have a question. How are you managing COVID protocols and what protocols will be taken. That is an important question. And yes, it is. one good thing is, thankfully, a lot of people are getting vaccinated now. So by November 2022, when we hit this cruise, we're hoping that they will have worked a lot of that out. But what are some things that are going on, Tammy? I know that's um, definitely a, of, of interest to a lot of people. It's a really important question. And honestly, you know, cruising on Regent Seven Seas will really be the safest way to go. I mean, we have been working so closely with um, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, and I'm sure you've seen him on TV, but he actually put together with 11 experts a very comprehensive plan that went to the CDC that's being reviewed. But I imagine, and nothing's been announced formally, uh, but I'm sure that our crew and as well as our guests will need to be vaccinated um, before they come on board. Of course, we'll have, uh, we'll be socially distancing on board the ship. 
we're going to have this brand new air filtration system that will take bacteria and viruses out of the air. We're spending a lot of money on that. So uh, we're very excited when we get back that it's going to be the safest way to go. And you will be in the bubble of Regent 7 Cs, uh, which you will be safe and happy. And Joyce was asking, this is a great question, Joyce. Are there any horseback riding excursions offered on this trip? Tammy and I are both equestrians. Yes, we are both. We, we, we both are avid riders. We've been both riding since we were very young. And it's one of my most favorite things to do. But I don't have the complete uh, shore excursion program yet because we get that about a year in advance. So you can start booking your excursions, actually, if you're in the concierge level and above it. 365 days prior, and if you're in a deluxe brand of suite at 300 days prior. So we're not there yet, uh, but I'll have a list. And if we don't offer something, I'm sure we can find horseback riding. There's horses everywhere around the world, but usually we do have something. Great questions. And then um, we had a question, are you requiring vaccinations or is it too early to say? We don't have, a, our parent company has already announced it. We haven't announced it just yet, but I'm sure that everyone that boards our shifts will be vaccinated along with the crew. So we're gonna roll through some of the next slides and continue to take your questions because we wanna to get to Chef. He's, he seems like he might almost be ready in the kitchen for our next phase of cooking. Um, but Minzy, if you wanted to go to the next slide, I just had to share with you guys because it's just funny and fun. More photos from my high school experience going to um, cruise with a friend's family. Yes, very cute. Um, and we had a great time drinking Bellinis when I was way too young in Venice. And I look forward <laughs> to, it. I know, I look forward to and biking around Rome. And I'm really looking forward to doing some of those same things, of course, taking in amazing art as well. And these are some of the different areas that we're going to be going to on this cruise. There are stops in Croatia, Montenegro, Greece, Sicily, and Naples. And if you haven't had Neapolitan pizza in Naples, you have something that you need to have on your list because it's absolutely amazing. Um, and Mincy, you can just go through some of the slides as I talk if you want. But here you see Venice. I mean, who Venice is one of one of my favorite places and I've actually gotten to go a couple of times now and including experience carnival there which was absolutely amazing uh, and it, taking around a water taxi is such a in itself a unique experience and seeing glass blowing and really learning about the art and culture of Italy if you guys have been to Italy by the way please tell us in the chat what your favorite destination is because if you have Italy close to your heart like I do you know it's such a wonderful place to return to again and again and I'm excited too about um, this cruise going to Croatia to split where the cocktail that we're getting to try is from um, getting to go to Malta and um, and Tammy do you want us to tell us about this slide this is actually uh, Couture Montenegro and I have to say out of all the cruising that I've done around the world you actually sail into this bay and you are absolutely mesmerized. You definitely have to be on deck when you sail into this bay. It is spectacular. Um, this is a world class destination. I mean, it's amazing. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a walled city. And one of the things that I did when I was there was I went to the seaside town of Bulba. I highly recommend it. There's a very cool restaurant called Olive. Uh, but this is a fascinating place. And as far as food, because we're talking a lot about food, uh, the locals and what they're really known for eating is um, Prosecco. Uh, well, they're drinking that and they're, eat <laughs> they're eating in for breakfast. This it's a Philip pastry, pastry and it has meat, cheese and spinach. And they're very famous for that in the morning. So don't miss that while you're there. Great. And we're just gonna roll through some of the next slides cause we're gonna- If we wanna go back one, that was actually a picture of, a, of Split. And one of the most popular things to do um, there is, is to go to Diocletian's Palace. And it's the number one attraction there. and. I don't know about you, but I watch a lot of Game of Thrones and they did a lot of filming there. So it's definitely a place to check out. The other thing about Croatia that a lot of people don't know is that they're really famous for their national parks. And we actually have a short excursion over to Kirka Park. And it's really known for um, 17 Cascades, a beautiful waterfall. Um, it's a beautiful place. Just It's like the Riviera. Great people watching. I can't say enough about Split. I absolutely loved it. Great, next slide. I'll let Tammy take this one. 
Are we going back? Oh no, because we, we need to move on. So we're going to do the we need to move on. Okay. So I really wanted to share with you, especially if you've been on land-based vacations or you've been on other cruise lines, honestly, sometimes get a bit sticker shock when they see our pricing, but you have to really understand what's included. And coming from LA, I can tell you that business class alone is about $5,000. Uh, this is a snapshot with air from Texas DFW. But when you add in every component that we have, we call it every luxury um, included. And our guests really love that because you don't have to think about anything because it's all right there. So if you want to stay in touch with loved ones, we have unlimited Wi-Fi. We'll even do your laundry for you. you go home with press laundry. Uh, of course, the shore excursions, when you think of the value of the shore excursions, they normally cost between 150 and $200. The ground transfers are included, the government fees and taxes. I've talked about the specialty dining, the premium spirits. And um, there's another thing that you pay for on other cruise lines and that's water. But we're all about uh, sustainability at Regent Seven Seas and uh, we don't have any plastic bottles on board. But it's things like that that you pay for other cruise lines um, that we have. We have the Vero Spring system and uh, our guests absolutely love it. But you can see at the end of the day, when you add everything in, we, we, we win hands down. We're just incredible value. Well, and we'll go to the next slide and then, um, because we're going to be introducing our chef next. Tammy, this was so great. And Tammy, before we go, actually, if you guys were just paying attention to what Tammy was saying, you might be able to win one of our trivia prizes. And I'm going to ask you the question. And if you're joining us on Zoom and if you're joining us on Facebook, if you think you have the answer, please type it as quickly as possible into the chat box because we'll be picking one winner from Zoom and one winner from Facebook that will win this first trivia prize. And just so you know what you will win, you will be winning um, this recipe book that, that Regent created. So you can find some of the things that you might wanna eat on the cruise and make them at home. And we'll also be sending you the Travels with Darlie travel bag and luggage tags. These are very cute. They look like little, little suitcases. So here's your trivia question. Get ready to type it into the chat. What popular HBO show used Dubrovnik and Split in Croatia as filming locations? If you were just paying attention to Tammy, it, oh, you guys are too fast. Wow, you guys type wow. that so fast. Wow. Okay, so we will go back and be messaging you for to get your address to ship you um, the prize here from our first trivia. And thank you guys for participating. Stay tuned for another question. And now we're going to introduce Chef, who's going to take us away to learn some amazing recipes tonight. Mediterranean Mediterranean dishes. Chef, tell us what we're going to learn to make here. All right. So can everyone see me? I think they can. Yes. Thanks again, Thanks again for having me, um, Darling and Tammy. It's really a pleasure. Just to add on, one, I just found this out today, so I think it's interesting news to relate to everyone. We are formally going to launch 35 brand new uh, culinary arts kitchen classes. Uh, so it should be really, really informative, engaging, technique driven, lots of fun. And as Tammy said, we have 18 stations. You individually, you get your own station, you get to cut, cook, prepare, and most importantly, eat and drink your own food. We try to be port specific. And by doing that, we want you to really kind of dive into the culture, not too different the way I grew up with your family and your friends. It's the best way to find out what a culture and a port is like by trying their cuisine. So we're jam packed. We're going to try to jam everything in. I think we're pretty good with timing. Uh, so the first dish we're going to do is a classic hummus. And if anybody's familiar with, uh, with garbanzo beans or chickpeas, when you get them, it's a little bit different than you get in the can. These are hard and dry. So uh, as, as uh, Darlie had recommended and said, please feel free to jump online to grab our recipes. Uh, but some of the items we did earlier. So we take our, uh, garbon our garbanzo beans, our chickpeas, and we soak them overnight with a little baking soda. After that, if you take a look, look at the size that's doubled. So without any preservatives, this is truly the ultimate fresh hummus that you can, uh, you can taste and enjoy. So these, uh, these garbanzo beans double in size, and then they, uh, we soak them overnight. Then, we take these, we drain them, and we cook them. We bring them to a boil. And then from that point, we lower the, uh, the temperature. And the thing that makes hummus extraordinary is how smooth and silky it is. 
The only way to do that is to make sure you absolutely overcook these beans. So they doubled in size. You can see they've actually become mushy. So we're gonna take our garbanzo beans, which are double from one cup to two cups. And they're going in our, uh, going in our uh, aroboku or our food processing. The next thing we need to do is, is to create a sauce. So we're gonna have a, uh, a tahini sauce. So I'm gonna take my blender here, if you can see. And if you watch, I have a whole uh, head of garlic. So I'm gonna squeeze this. And I think you may be a little bit surprised by what I do. I'm gonna take the entire clove of garlic with the, uh, with the skin on it and put that into our blender. Next, well, I I want want to add, what's that? Pretty wild, right? What well, of garlic we got going on there. So what we do always recommend is, is if there's any dirty uh, or any dark skin to make sure you uh, make sure you peel it off. But I'm gonna take uh, one third of a cup of lemon, lemon juice, and I'm gonna add this into our mix. We'll put this on top. I'm gonna to add just a little bit of cold ice water. Take this on top and I'm gonna blend this. So watch out for the sound. Of it. <laughs> this is called live cooking people. We are live. There. All right, so we wanna take this and we want to drain this. So we want to get rid of all of that skin. I feel like I can smell that garlic. I smelled the basil earlier and now I'm smelling the garlic over here. I feel like we're doing food vision tonight. So now we're going to take this and we're going to spread this all throughout. If anybody heard that, uh, that container drop, we don't need that container. So that's a good thing tonight. All right. So we'll spread that off. And you can see we've gotten all of this. We're gonna move this to the side. And this is our foundation. So we're gonna take our blender back. We're gonna add our, uh, our garlic and our lemon juice. Now we're gonna add tahini. And if anybody's familiar with tahini, it's toasted sesame. We're gonna add a full cup here. I love the comment from Anna Marie. She said, just so you didn't knock over the rum or Prosecco. <laughs> no, that's always on the absolute other side. So that goes there. Now, if anybody's uh, familiar with cumin, cumin comes in seeds. We always recommend that people buy the seeds first. Then you want to put them in a saute pan, toast them. Once you toast them, we actually uh, suggest that you get a, a coffee grinder that's exclusive to, uh, to just your herbs and spices, not your coffee, and you mince that and you grind that, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon. And Chef Liz had a question, why did you leave the garlic paper on? Yeah, so one of the things that you wanna get is you really wanna infuse the total flavor, and if anybody's familiar with garlic, if you smell the, uh, the head of garlic with the skin on, what you'll find is there's really an absolute deep garlic aroma. And we know if we blend that up at a, at a high, high rate of about speed, it'll really kind of enhance the flavor. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Back to the blender. You get that off. You can take this now, put this to the side. And I just love, I love the Mediterranean um, theme in general for food because it's always just so fresh, fresh and flavorful. So I'm glad we're getting some tips here tonight um, from so You can see our tahini sauce is nice and thick. So I, I, I wanna add some water, some ice cold water. Cause I wanna loosen that up. And the consistency I'm looking for is a cream consistency like milk or cream. I just spotlighted you, you so we could see this technique here, Chef. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is I want to blend this one more time. And I'm going to add some. We got a lot of blending going on, guys. 
Oh, and she said, and Liz said, thank you. She's got half a bed of garlic planted. We always recommend that if you have a farm uh, or if you're doing some gardening that you find a way to incorporate your own flavors. Look at this, it looks like uh, milk chocolate or cream. So I'm gonna put that in there, put this to the side. And then in goes our rotary processor. I'm going to add again another half teaspoon of cumin, half teaspoon of salt, two special salt in there. See our consistency. This is the way hummus is supposed to look. See that? Now, what you can do is you can actually refrigerate this overnight to get it a little bit more bound and a little bit thicker. But I'm going to take this. I'm pour this in here. So fresh. Yes. Now I'm going to have try the hummus I have from my um, New York Upper West Side place. They're Please not, do that. Not going to be as good as Jeff, but I did, I did get some. If you guys are enjoying food along with us, let us know what you're eating. <laughs> We'd love to know. <laughs> Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to get some uh, some parsley. And uh, where did my parsley go? Right here. I want to add a couple sprigs to garnish. That looks beautiful. Janet asked if it tastes better than what you get at the grocery store. Yeah. I think so. I hope so. I, I believe it does. The thing, when you buy it at the grocery store, it just gets so... Uh, filled with preservatives. So I'm going to take my spoon here and create some indentation. I'm going to taste this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And everyone out there is eating some interesting things tonight, chef. We've got <laughs> venison, tikka, marsala. Someone had the impossible sandwich from Starbucks, which well, is vegan. And we've I got add paprika. And there it is, your classic hummus. I'll put this to the side for now. Mm. That looks delicious. So I'm definitely going to be recreating this now that I have seen the techniques in action, Chef. You have inspired me, and so many of us have been cooking during COVID. So lessons like these are kind of invaluable now that we're all um, ha have spent so much more time cooking at home. It looks really, really good. And I'm excited now because we're going to do a fish dish. Yes. So if, uh, if anybody's traveled the Mediterranean before, one of my favorite fish is the bronzino. It's a classic Mediterranean fish, light in texture, really beautiful, either grilled or shallow poached, which we're going to do tonight. I have this fillet. And then here are our two pieces. I want to leave the skin on. I'll put this in front for now. I'm going to trim this down. I've heated up my induction burner. Now, one of the things that we do is, is we use induction burners uh, on the ship. They won't let me have a, a flame on the ship, so don't feel safe and feel comfortable. It'll be uh, it'll be perfect and enjoyable. Okay, so I've turned my uh, I've turned my induction burner up to medium high. That's probably a four or five in your uh, in your house. I'm gonna take some extra virgin olive oil. Can we see this? Yes. Okay, garnish that. Next thing I wanna do is take some shallots. I'll put this to the side while we do some cut work. I'm gonna take some shallots and some, uh, some garlic. Watch how I hold my knife. One of the things that we try to work on is knife skills. So if you take your knife, pinch it, wrap your fingers around and slice. We'll put that to the side and I'm going to open these up and I'm going to take two shallots and slice them thin. This is something I can definitely work on is cutting skills. I don't know about you guys, but I find it a little challenging sometimes on the cutting. Yeah, the knife tips well, are always helpful. What we try to do is make sure it's uh, speed is important, but you'll learn speed over time. We'd rather you be precise and learn the skill behind it. So if you can watch closely, I'll take my knife and I will slide this, slide, 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 slide. So that's two shallots. I want to leave the rings on. 
And I'll take this, I'll use my bench scraper. One, we recommend that you don't use your knife, especially on a moving ship. So we're gonna take our shallots. Can you hear the sizzle? Always use your senses, use your nose, your eyes, your ears, and most importantly, your, uh, your sense of taste. All right, now I'm gonna take two cloves of garlic. I think we all wish we were with you, chef, right now because we'd be smelling all of this. Well, if anybody's close by, they can come eat. There's plenty of food this evening. <laughs> Let's do. I'm not that far from Philadelphia. <laughs> this is true, darling. <laughs> so, two cloves of garlic. I'm going to slice them thin. Watch how I slide my knife. And if you can watch my hands, you, instead of uh, taking your hand and leaving it flat, you want to walk it up like a crab. I'm going to turn that down because it's I can smell that. There's my garlic slices. So, Chef, when when folks are on board um, and they they do the culinary arts kitchen classes, are these some of the things that they might be getting to learn or experience as well? On, on this yeah, this is this is actually in one of our classes, Bounty of the Sea. So you can see our shallots are becoming slightly translucent. I don't want any color on my garlic. So from there, I'm going to add some Kalamata olives, about a half a cup, a nice pinch of pepperoncino. Mm. Who else is hungry out there? Now you can buy these uh, all over the Mediterranean. These are uh, these are capers. I like them packed in salt. So if you take these capers and you rinse them off in cold water, we're going to use a cup full of capers. Yum. Yeah. So this is the basis of shallow poaching. There's two types of poaching that we want you to recognize. Deep poaching, or which is where you take the, uh, the fish and you submerge it under the water. This is shallow poaching. So think of snorkeling. So we're going to actually ride up on the top. So that's that. And I want to take some cherry tomatoes. I'll teach a kind of a cool trick here because you don't have a lot of time to cut all the cherry tomatoes. I'm going to take two lids. It's actually two lids of ice cream that I had over the last couple of weeks. Put them on top of here. Take your knife, slide it through. Oh, this is a great tip. See? And look what we have there. Half of our tomatoes. I'm gonna take another handful. I'll do this slowly so you can see it. Take this again. Take my knife. Slide it through. You can recycle, you can be efficient, you can make it better. It's a win. There we go. All of our tomatoes in. So I wish you could smell these flavors. So what's the next most important thing to do is to add wine. So since this is a bed for us and we're going to be swimming on top of this bed, I want to Put just enough wine to cover the bottom. Wow. Capers and tomatoes, yes. and shallots. Wow, this combination. Yeah, and so you, you love that tip, Jeff. And smell them. I want to taste this. My objective now is to, is to make sure we burn off the alcohol. How do we know we're burning off the alcohol? Is when you start to see steam, so. I've got this up to medium high. I'll take my Ronzino. And Chef Mora is asking what kind of wine you're using. It's a great question. So I'm using a, I'm using a dry white wine. You wanna make sure that it's not too sweet. Pinot Grigio sometimes is a little bit too acidic and a Chardonnay is, uh, is often a little bit too deep and oaky. So this is a Sauvignon Blanc here. I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. Can you see the bubbles here? So shallow poaching 
is cooked about, um, you want to cook it between 165 and 175 degrees. When we cook fish, the final temperature should be anywhere between 125 and 135. If you reached 140 on your fish, you probably overcooked it. So we can see the steam coming off. That means I'm burning the alcohol. Turn this up one more time. So this is a this is not that that complicated. I'm glad to say, you know. No, no, the, well, the thing that's important, the thing that's important, Darlie, is, is that people recognize when they come to the culinary arts kitchen that you're really going to learn techniques. You're going to find ways to take your cooking level either from a novice level up to the next uh, 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 next advancement, or we've even had some very advanced chefs. We want you to enjoy, but we think we know that you're going to go home and use some of these recipes and become a, uh, become, become a rock star yourself. So the way you can tell if the alcohol is burned off, if you don't smell metal anymore or metallic, then you know you're good to go. So I'm going to take my temperature and I'm going to lower it down to medium low. When you shallow poach, I only want a couple bubbles. So I'm going to take my bronzino, skin side down. And then the next thing is, is we, we, uh, we don't want to put a lid on this. The last thing we would do for shallow poaching is put a lid on that. If we did, then we're steaming the fish. We want this to dance across the top of the water. And you can see we just have a couple small bubbles, which is good. So we're going to use this item here called a cartouche, which is a, a French term for a hat or a lid. And all you need to do is take a, a piece of parchment paper, fold it in half, and then just like you were at, you made paper airplanes when you were a little kid, you want to take that and fold it and fold it and fold it. And then all of a sudden, you come up with this absolutely neat. So we'll take our cartouche. Put this on top. Feel free to stick this in, to submerge it into the water. So what will happen is the steam will roll up, it'll hit the top, it'll cascade down, and instead of overcooking our fish, it'll be nice and light and delicate. All right, let me move on to one more dish while we're having this cook. Chef has some really this great our, tonight, guys. I'm, I'm excited that, um, and, it, and the great thing about this too is that this will be also shared on our Facebook page. So if you're watching this tonight and you're saying, oh, I didn't get to write everything down or I didn't, you know, the recipes are on our website and you can rewatch this on our Facebook page as well um, to be able to go back and, and see some of these tips again, because these are really great tips. Yes. And I, I Shannon said that she can't wait to make this fish dish. Well, Shannon, maybe you can make it um, when I come to visit you in Florida. <laughs> Oh, this is very true. So I, I watch my dish. I see little bubbles. That's good shape. We'll peek into it a little bit in a second. Uh, but in the interim, while this is cooking, let's dive right into our tzatziki. So what we have here is a shredded cucumber. We shred it in our box shredder. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Just take your box, uh, your box shredder. Take your cucumber. And there you go, you have absolutely beautiful shreds. Be careful because um, if, you, if, you, if you grate it on the long side, it'll be a little bit stringy and a little bit too much. So take our bench scraper again and put this in here. Now we take, we'll take our cucumber and our yogurt and we'll, we'll uh, put them, we'll strain, put them in strainers. And if you take a look underneath, this is what happens at the end. All of this water comes out. So that's a good thing because the last thing you want is really watery tzatziki. What kind of yogurt are you using, Chef? So I use Greek yogurt. Uh, we're in the area, we're in the, but if you wanted to use a low fat yogurt, the only thing we try not to do is not to use a, uh, is not to use a non-fat yogurt. You really lose some of the taste profile. And, and Liz is asking what common fish can we use as a substitute or what types of fish can you use to make this dish? Yeah, so you could use sea bass if you wanted to. You could use a dorad. You could even use a cod. I would stick away from the steak fishes like uh, swordfish or, uh, or, uh, or mahi-mahi. 
So I'll take my, my cucumber and I put it in some cheesecloth. Watch what happens when I strain this. Wow. Even more where it comes out. So I'll leave that to the side. Can everybody see here? So look how thick our yogurt is. The consistency of everything has been interesting tonight that I've been seeing you make, Chef. It's interesting. So here's our belief, and we think the Mediterranean cuisine fits perfectly. Quality ingredients, just a, just a few of them, four or five ingredients, a simple preparation, and you're probably gonna have an absolutely incredible dish. All right, I wanna add some garlic. That's about uh, three cloves. And then I need some dill. And some mint again. And if any of you uh, are growing herbs, then you, you're in luck with these dishes if you're growing things at home. Yeah, you can see you can see me cut again. Mince this up. You see how my knuckles are curved under? Instead of my knife, I'm going to use my bench scraper. Side. All right, let me peek under the hood. Mm. Look at our fish. It's close. So you see how it's still a little bit translucent there? We're looking for this really nice white, uh, white opaque color. See tiny bubbles, so we're approaching beautifully. Again, back on with the lid. Some mint. Probably about seven leaves. And we'll, we'll mince that up as well, just like we did with the, uh, with the dill. And this is just a classic. I'll take my mint leaves, put them one on top of the other. Then I'm gonna roll it up. I think we have another and trick fold. coming. And fold it and then slide the knife. I need to take a cutting class from you, Chef. We, we actually, we're, we don't always offer it, but we do have a, a class called our slice class, which is really a lot of fun where we do teach uh, cook uh, knife skills. All right, there we go. So now I just need a, uh, a spoon. I'm going to mix this. You can see that there's no liquid, which makes the spread uh, kind of gooey and a little bit too loose. We want this as thick as possible. And that's why we shredded it and waited overnight. You can see how colorful this is. It is color. I love, I love the green. The green is so vibrant. That's, what, love... that's what Mediterranean cuisine is all about. That's just a few ingredients, really fresh, highly flavorful. Just going to take a couple minutes and mix that. All right. We are Janet's, good. Asking, Janet's asking chef what the last set of leaves that you used were. So our, our greens are uh, shredded cucumber. Then we use about two tablespoons of uh, dill and about two tablespoons of mint. A little bit of garlic, uh, drained uh, yogurt. I'm using 3% uh, uh, fat, Greek yogurt. And that's good to go. Chef is going to have a feast over there. I am. Again, who wants to join us? I do. Like <laughs> this. Tammy does. 
Mincy does, everybody does. I do, I'm really hungry just watching all these techniques, right? <laughs> Looks delicious, chef, as usual. You're welcome. To the side. Here's our tzatziki. And um, again, you guys, these recipes are on my website. Um, darley-newman.com and we'll type it into the chat so you can follow along and make these at home if you didn't get them already. Ah, look at this. Perfect timing. Look at our bronzino. It's cooked all the way through. You can see that uh, the translucency has gone. So I'll put this to the side. That looks great. And um, Carlotta is asking chef that she says she's allergic to dairy. Can you use a yogurt alternative? Yeah, so uh, there are different uh, alternative uh, vegan uh, yogurts and cheeses. We think it's a great idea. It may have a little bit less of that kind of filling flavor from you get from a fat um, or a dairy product, but uh, absolutely. So I wanna take and dress our bowl. Moving our fish to the side. Making Jeff, sure I'm coming out. over. That looks amazing. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm spotlighting it again because. Yeah, we'll put that to the side. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to take our fish, lay this on top, turn this. Off. The best part is when they played it so beautifully as chefs. It can be hard to recreate at home sometimes. Well, it's funny. We fat we find that finishing off a dish is probably the most important. Uh, so what I've done here for you today is I've taken a half of lemon, I grilled it on my grill. And I squeeze that out into uh, this little cylinder here. So we have a, a grilled lemon juice. I'm going to delicately pour that up on top. Put that to the side. I'm going to take a uh, knife. I'm gonna slice this. And we just pasted into the chat too, you guys, the link so you can check out um, these recipes online. Put this on top here. Then I'll take a little Maldon flake saw here, which comes from the southern coast of, our, of, uh, of England. You have to throw in the uh, uh, Great Britain, even though we're in the Mediterranean. And then I'm gonna take, this is some olive oil. As Tammy mentioned, you'll see uh, some either olive oil -like locations or balsamic vinegars when you travel through Italy. This is what's called a first pressed olive oil. And the uh, early October, uh, when the olives are picked, they, they actually make a very special olive oil that is typically used for families and friends, but I think they'll find a way to get you some there. So if you take a look, here is beautiful. Always have to have some wine, some flatbreads. Even his bread looks good, guys. <laughs> By the way, uh, we always, I always get a kick out of my mother. Uh, she, uh, uh, the last time we were cooking together, she had boxed wine and she said, John, what do you think? Can I use this boxed wine in the uh, shallow poached bronzino dish? Cause I taught her how to cook it and she loves it. It's so easy. She's 81 as of, uh, as of yesterday, by the way. Um, and I said, mom, do you like the, do you like the wine? And she goes, no, I can't stand it. I said, well, why would you reduce a wine to put on your dish if you didn't like it together? So make sure you cook with the wines you like. You keep the ingredients simple. You make sure that they're gently prepared. And I promise 
you'll have an absolutely extraordinary dinner. This is what we, uh, this is the type of classes that we have. Uh, we will start off with our uh, tzatziki, our Mediterranean tzatziki with cucumber and yogurt, dill, and a little bit of, uh, of acid. We have our hummus, which is extraordinary. Uh, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, whole head of garlic, leave the skin on, finish off with a little paprika and some extra virgin olive oil. And then my favorite, the highlight of the day is our, uh, is our bronzino, our Mediterranean bronzino fish, shallow poached, cooked to about 125, 130 degrees. And if you watch here, watch how this flakes right off. And there you go. So this is our night. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to have a drink. Bravo, Seth. I think we need to Thank do you a for, cheers. I know we rushed cheers. you a little bit. Cheers. I, know what, I, I hope you didn't mind us keeping you extra, uh, but we can't tell you how excited we were that you joined us. And thank you for everything. Cheers to everybody. We're going to have one more trivia question before we go. Chef, brilliant. Amazing, you're getting the best raving reviews over here from everybody. And of course, everyone is saying definitely you need to cook with the wine that you would drink. So we really appreciate getting that tip too. And we'll relay it back to our relatives and friends. And we're just loving seeing you try this too. So how is it tasting over there? It's unbelievable, it's delicious. And if you two uh, don't mind, I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm gonna just keep on eating. Okay, so while Chef gets to enjoy some of this amazing food, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we've been typing some information into the chat if you're interested in going on board and experiencing the Culinary Arts Kitchen with Chef, hanging out with me on this November 2022 cruise. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be so much fun and a great way to experience the Mediterranean. And we just wanna test your knowledge one more time with a trivia question for your chance to win the cookbook. So you can get some more of these Regent recipes and try them at home, as well as our travel bag and luggage tags. And it's the first one to tap the, type the correct um, answer into the chat here on Zoom and also on Facebook. And the question is, what is the capital of Croatia? So all of you um, friends out there who love to travel, what is the capital of Croatia? And I see the correct answer coming in. I know at least Isabel has gotten that one right with Zagreb. And I, I know that's something that's so amazing about travel is that your knowledge expands so much when you get to visit great places like that, um, like Croatia and Montenegro and Italy and all the wonderful experiences that are gonna be on this particular cruise, November, 2022. We're gonna be signing off here in a minute, but we really thank you guys for joining us. And please do um, check out our Facebook page to find out about other lives. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter, which you can find on our website to hear about these events that we're running because we're doing a lot of virtual events coming up. And we're also starting to film again for our PBS series this summer. So you can follow me on the road. I'll be posting and doing lives as we travel around the USA to film a new season of our series. So I'm really excited to do that. I can't wait to get back on the road and share with you guys these amazing places. And thank you everyone who attended tonight, Sharon and Shannon and um, everybody who was here, Anna Maria, Isabel, Liz, you guys have just been awesome and really awesome participating. We really enjoyed it. Janet, thank you so much as well. And Tammy, I'll let you say thank you as we sign off here. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Darlie, I can't wait for you to come on board and experience Regent. Chef Stefano, you are amazing as always. And uh, for all of you out there, we hope to see you on a Regent Seven Seas Cruise with Darlie coming up. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. <laughs>